Thank you for giving us the social media platforms that we have to be able to broadcast. We thank you for all that you've done for us, and I pray for a spirit-filled and informative program this evening. I pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll begin by singing the hymn number four. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, number four. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. Ransom healed, restored, forgiven, who like thee this praise to sing. Praise him, praise him, hallelujah, praise the everlasting King. Praise him for his grace and favor to our fathers in distress. Praise him still the same forever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Praise him, praise him, hallelujah. Seven, rejoice, ye pure in heart. Rejoice, give thanks and sing. Your festal banner name on high. The cross of Christ your King. Thank you. 
the great physician now is near. Thank you. Second to last night in our health series with Dr. Thomas Jackson from Tennessee. We ask that you continue to be a part of the program. It continues tomorrow night and on Sabbath. And remember our cooking class at Central Jamaica Conference head office on Sunday, and that is located on Brunswick. We ask that as your man servant will come, God's man servant will come tonight to speak to us. We will give him our undivided attention to hear a word from God. And so I'll turn over to Sister Barrett who will pray for us. Good night, church. Good night, good night, good night. Would you stand and pray with me, please? Let us pray. Eternal Father and our God, what a privilege it is, Lord, to be in your presence again this evening. We thank you for your keeping care through the week so far. We thank you for the many blessings that you have strewed upon our way. We thank you, Father, that even though we don't deserve it, yet you have showered down your love upon us. From the moment we rise in the mornings till we go back to our beds, you've been with us. You have been with us through this series, dear Father. We have seen your hand at work. We pray, Lord, that those who have come out and even those who are listening online will hear your sweet voice speaking to our hearts and helping us to understand how much you love us. 
tonight, Lord, as we gather in the sanctuary, either actually in the sanctuary or online, we pray that again your sweet Holy Spirit will be here with us, that he will activate our brain cells and will help us that we'll be able to focus on that message that you're sending to us through your servant, Thomas Jackson. So pour out your spirit upon him, Father. Bless him, Lord. Touch his tongue with that life called from your altar. And when all is said and done, Lord, may we rejoice in you and say it was good for us to have been here. Thank you for our blessed Savior, Jesus, and all that he has done, is doing, and will do for us. For we thank you in his name. Amen. Amen. Let me say good evening, everyone. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to us this evening our special speaker. Dr. Thomas Jackson has become a good friend of mine over the past few days. I've known of him for maybe over 30 some years and his ministry has spanned over 40 years. I'm not going to bore you with any too much information at this time, just to say that I am very happy that he had a testimony. And because of this testimony, he has been embarking on a life project of helping others to live a healthy, happy, God-centered life. May the Lord bless you all those online, I pray that the Lord will open the line so that there's not much disturbances. And for our speaker, I just pray that God will bless his tongue and his brain cells that the information that have been stored there will reach us tonight and help us to have wonderful changes in our life. May the Lord bless you all. Thank you. I'd like to say good night to everyone. Good night. We have a few more together evenings, and we're going to start dealing with a series of presentation on some chronic diseases that impact those here living in Jamaica. This evening we're gonna look at disarming diabetes. Disarming diabetes. When we come back again, the next time we're gonna be dealing with silencing the silent killer. That's high blood pressure. Then Sabbath, we're gonna spend some time with the answer to cancer. So those are the three very pivotal talks we're going to have. So those online, those who know, these conditions are very important here in this country. All right? So we already had a word of prayer. I'd like to turn to the book of Psalms 120. Psalms 120, and we want to look at, I want to be sure I have that right. In verse 7, 120, Psalms 120. And, and the Bible tells us that God is the healer, but here in Psalms 120, uh, did I say 120, 120, I mean 107, I'm sorry. Let's look at 107. 107, verse 20. Are you there with me? So those who have the Bible or your cell phone, let's read Psalms 107, verse 20 together. What does it say? Let's read it. It says, he what? 
and healed them and delivered them from all their what? God's word has healing power in it. Abundant help. All right, there's our favorite text up on the screen there. You see that up there? Psalms 103, verse 3. So let's read this together. What does it say? Know ye, I don't hear you, know ye that the Lord, he is what? It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That text tells us that God owns us. He has given us an owner's manual, the word of God. And all of our series of talk come from the word of God, supported by science, but we do not go to science to prove God's word. God's word stands alone. Therefore, science is catching up with God's word. So every product comes with a manufacturer owner's manual. So let's read these eight doctors aloud together. What's that first doctor up there? Godly trust, open air, daily exercise, sunshine, proper rest, Lots of water, always temperate, and nutrition. Psalms 119, 73. Psalms 119, 73 says, Thy hands have fashioned me and made me. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy commandment. So let's get some understanding this evening. Now, God has an affordable health care plan. Everybody know the name of God Health Care Program? Absolutely right. It's O Bible Care. O Bible Care. Affordable Health Care Program. O Bible Care. Affordable Health Care Plan. Affordable. This is the plan. This is the plan. He sent his word. Now, Proverbs 22, 3 says that a prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Now, let's put that in some modern language. What is that text telling you? Of? What can we say in just our own language? That a prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but a foolish man or a simple man pass on and they are punished. Well, while you're thinking, I'm going to move forward. Prevention is what? Prevention is what? Better than cure. Better than cure. Very good. What do we want, the fence or the ambulance? The fence to protect us. Now, there's a place for the ambulance, but we want to focus in on the fence, and that is the word of God, the laws of God. So this evening, let's see how can we postpone our funeral. Not that we're trying to say, well, nobody's going to die. Well, there would be some people who would be alive when Christ comes. But in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, 17, why should you die before your time? You know, the average lifespan here in, in Jamaica, <clears throat> I believe, is about 65. About 65. That's still a teenager, 65. Hello out there, huh? That's not old. Which is, is 65 old to anybody here? Mm, it's not old. God promised us at least 80 years and would desert 90 years. It's very good. God's plan for disarming diabetes. Now, you're not going to remember one six what I say, so therefore, for a loved one, we have this book. God's plan for disarming diabetes. God's plan. All the plan is in this book. So we're going to take a journey, and let's see can we get an understanding of this important subject. Right here in Jamaica, in this wonderful island, Jamaica, leading cause of diseases, number one, heart disease, number two, cancer, number three, diabetes. Leading cause of disease. Let's go back here and get a little stats. Here it says in 2019, stroke was the leading cause of death in ja Jamaica. The condition characterized by poor blood flow in the brain caused nearly 82 deaths per 100,000 population. 
diabetes mellitus with a mortality rate of around 70.45% death per 100,000 people was the second leading cause of death reported in that year. That's here in Jamaica. A lot of death from diabetes. It goes on and says cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and cancer in 2019 were the top three causes of death and disability collectively accounting for 42% of all healthy life loss. Other non-communicable diseases increases burden to three quarters of all healthy life loss. A lot of folks dying from these diseases that are preventable. That's why meetings like this seem like doesn't appeal to a lot of folks, but a lot of folks are dying as a result of not having the knowledge of the situation. So, why is diabetes so high in Jamaica? It goes on and says a variety of key risk factors influences the diabetes in the Caribbean. These include obesity, alcohol, tobacco, low levels of fruit, and vegetable intake. Now, that really hit me, low level of fruit, low level of fruit. Now, I'm living in a place that mangoes is just all on the ground. Noni, Aki, you name it. I, then as I travel, low level of fruit, I mean, somebody talk to me. Maybe, maybe this information is not quoted right. Hello out there, huh? Okay. <laughs> I don't understand that. Low levels of fruit and vegetable intake, physical inactivity, and unsafe sex. Dr. Alafia Samuels was reported as commenting, there is an economic cost to all of this. It impacts the economy of this nation. Do you know that? Therefore, we can help to arrest that situation. Unlock the code for diabetes. What is diabetes? To some of you all, this might not be new, but let's go ahead and get a little diabetes 101. Diabetes. <clears throat> what is diabetes? Explain and illustrate it. A Greek doctor named Erythius, A.D. 120 to 200, was the first to call the disease diabetes. Means to siphon or flow through. The two main symptoms are a great thirst and a need to pass water frequently. Two principles, all right? <clears throat> Siphon, flow through. The Latin word melitus was added later. It means honey, honey, describing the sugary urine that diabetics excrete due to high levels of glucose circulating in the bloodstream. Very basic, all right? <clears throat> Melitis, honey. You know, before the turn of the century, they did not have the sophisticated apparatus to check for diabetes. But do you know how doctors used to test for diabetes? How? Well, not ants. Huh? And what? Well, that's true. But they used to have to taste the urine of their patient. Then they used the ant heel. So during that time, I definitely would not pursue a course in necrologist. I'm not going to taste nobody pee. Are you with me? Therefore, I put an ant heel there and put some sugar there. It would track the ants, all right? So that's the way they used to do that. Aren't you so glad they don't do that no more? Well, well, you don't know. You don't have to taste your own urine. Uh -huh. All right. Now, I want you to listen to these definitions. When I get to how it works, you'll see. It says here, diabetes is a condition in which there is an abnormal response to insulin and or inadequate insulin production causing high sugar levels. 
All right? Let's move forward. Now, two types of diabetes. Type 1, juvenile, insulin dependent. Type 1, insulin dependent. Type 2 is adult onset, non-insulin dependent. All right? Let's go back over. Type 1, juvenile diabetes, insulin dependent. Now, what does it mean, insulin dependent? You got to constantly have artificial insulin injected. Now, type 2 is non insulin dependent. Please keep that in mind. Now, what is type 2? Right, keep that in mind. We're going to see something. Now, type 1 affects at least 5 to 10, 5 to 10 percent of the population. Type 1. What is type 1 diabetes? Insulin dependent. All right. Insulin dependent. Got to have it. Type 2 affects 90% of all diabetics. Now, what is type 2? Non insulin dependent. All right. Now, what's the cause of type 2 diabetes? It can occur if any process results in the destruction or malfunction of insulin in the cell in the rest of the body these include we find here inherited or acquired mutation in insulin receptors it's going to come clear now next we find that animal fat animal fat and we find here production or resisting by fat cells, especially abdominal fat, the belly fat. Let's move forward here. We find how we're going to disarm this diabetes. Now, diabetes has, has doubled within the whole world in 25 years, over 300 million people a day. Risk factor, heredity, diet, obesity, no regular exercise during pregnancy. Age, the older you get, higher the risk. In pregnancy, you can end up with what you call gestation diabetes. Gestation diabetes. Meaning a child will inherit the predisposition because of the mother, definitely of her lifestyle, pass it on to the child. It affects us from the head to the toe. Head to the toe, diabetes. Life expectancy shortened by five to 10 years. Two to 12 times the risk for heart attacks. Two to four times the risk of stroke. Number one cause of blindness in adults. Retinol retinol retinitis, uh, retinitis uh, glaucoma, et cetera. Heart disease, kidney failure, eye disease, retinopathy, Peripheral neuropathy, that's nerve damage in the extremities, your hands and your feet. All of these are risk factors in diabetes. Eye problem, kidney damage. We find in, in, in any given year, over 50,000 diabetics are either on dialysis or have had a kidney transplant due to diabetic neuropathy. So dialysis, anybody familiar with dialysis? I mean, you're on a machine, the exchange, you gotta pull all your blood out, exchange some clean blood, you gotta stay 24 hours. We had a case, it's very rare we take the case. A dear soul came to our lifestyle center. <clears throat> they were on four exchange a day. That's the whole life in a day. But when they went through the program, they got down from four to one exchange a day. One exchange a day. So, now what is peripheral neuropathy? That means the body takes water from the furthest part of the heart. The minerals in the feet are carried away by the water. This damages your feet. So therefore, neuropathy can be in your legs. It takes water farther from the heart, <clears throat> from the limbs, and therefore, minerals such as potassium, Calcium, 
are leashed out of the body, then you have nerve problems. Sometimes you walk and you just feel the nerves tingling, neuropathy. Two to four times a heart attack, eye problem. We go on. Sexual impotence, ulcerated sores, infection, amputation, breast, uterine cancer. <clears throat> I work with an individual who had neuropathy and not enough blood flowing to the feet. So the doctor told them, you got to get your toe amputated. Now, I want you to listen to me. Once they start cutting on one toe, they're going to cut two, three toes. Then they're going to cut your feet. We have my sister, which stays with us at the ministry. She's 101 years old. She was a diabetic and high blood pressure. <clears throat> We went to get her, stay with her, provide her with an atmosphere, a healthy spiritual atmosphere, and diet. She had a toe that was about ready to go. It was due for amputation at that age. But the Lord is so merciful, at 101, she no longer have diabetes, no longer have high blood pressure. She is stronger than she ever been. So I know this plan worked. I know it works. Amputation, we find. Now, how does diabetes work? Now, remember, the Bible says in Luke 16, 10, it said, he that is faithful in that which is least will be also faithful also in much. Least. The cell is the smallest unit of the human body. That's the foundation, the cell. Healthy cells equal a healthy body. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So, notice upon the screen there, you got cell, tissue, organs, systems, body. So, the body is made up of cells. Sickness or health affects all of us at a cellular level. Follow me now. If the cells are healthy, the body is going to be healthy. This is just simple, basic physiology, all right? Healthy cells. Now, there are five needs of the cell. Five needs of the cell. Oxygen. Without oxygen, the cells would die in minutes. We're going to look at cancer. Seven. We'll see that cancer cells thrive in a low oxygen environment. The cells need water. Without water, the cells going to die within several days. Number three, cell new needs nutrients. Without nutrients, they will die within several weeks. Waste elimination, poison must be eliminated. If the poison is not quickly eliminated, they will die within hours. Freedom from poison, that means what you put in the body, alcohol, tobacco, whatever you're breathing in, cells always die prematurely. Five needs of the cells. Very important. For the Bible tells us that the life of the flesh is where? In the blood. In order to have good health, we got to have good blood. Glucose, the fuel of the body. Glucose. Insulin, you see that key there? So that means insulin unlocks something. Insulin, when your body produces insulin, it unlocks something. The pancreas, the insulin is produced. Type 2 diabetes is the cause we find. Not insulin shortage, insulin blockage. Are you with me so far? Type 2. It's not that your body do not produce enough insulin. It's insulin blockage. We'll see how this works. We'll find normal by design. You got the pancreas there. You got that cell over there. You see insulin going to move the glucose into that busy cell. We find <clears throat> here, if it can't get in, we'll find some problem. You see those little nodules, those are what you call cell receptors. Cell receptors, lazy cells. We find the same process, but can't get in. No thank. We don't need it. Can't get in. That's something interfering with that glucose, get it into the body as a result of the insulin trying to unlock the insulin receptors. 
Wrong choices. Insolent resistance. Here how it works again. So we have insulin and glucose. Glucose comes from the foods we eat. We understand that. Right? Food gets into the bloodstream. The insulin is the key that unlike those insulin receptors. So we find most of the time the cells are coated with fat. You see that fat coated those cells. So therefore the insulin cannot unlock it and the glucose cannot get in. So where does the glucose stay? What do you think? In the blood where it does not belong. So sometimes there's not enough insulin produced by the pancreas. So glucose, insulin. So the glucose stays in the blood, which can cause considerable damage. Considerable damage. Blindness, kidney failure, neuropathy, ulcers, infection, amputation. What are the warning signs? Warning sign, excessive thirst, frequent urination, fatigue, tiredness. You have any of these signs, continue having that thirst. Frequent urination, fatigue. Now, why this excess is first? Now listen, God is so wonderful to us. He builds into our system mechanism that will compensate for our abuse. If we are overloading the body with sugar, the kidneys, the body will kick in, flushing the sugar out of the blood, craving for more water. As we drink more water, we're assisting the kidneys, helping us to stay alive for a little longer till we come to our senses. Huh? So, excessive thirst, excessive urination. <clears throat> the body is trying to eliminate the excess sugar that did not go in the cell. Frequent urination. You'd be one, man, well, I wish I could stop urinating. Well, if you want to stop frequently urinating, we got to stop the diabetes. But don't complain about the frequent urination because it's saving your life until you come to your senses. Did you get what I'm saying? All right, it's important. Stop complaining about God's mechanism. It's very important. <clears throat> so, excessive thirst, excessive urination, and excessive appetite. Hungry cells. You got to have maybe 10 meals a day. If, you, if you're a diabetic, like I asked the clients when I talked to them about diabetes, I said, now does your doctor explain to you what contribute to diabetes? Very few doctors do that. I'm not saying they're not following their protocol. Then they put you on five to six meals a day. Now, there's a reason for that. Now you tell me, somebody tell me why they would recommend you to eat five to six meals a day. Anybody? Any, anyone? Get a mic, speak through the mic. Uh, all right, here's a mic. Anybody can share with me real quick? Mm -mm. Not? Turn it on there. Why five to six meals a day? Because the sugar or the glucose is not going into the cell. Okay. The cells are hungry, they are fatigued, and so... Um, the doctors are recommending that you eat more, but that sugar keeps mm -hmm. circulating in the blood instead of going <clears throat> in the cells. Very good. So therefore, five or six meal will help to maintain your blood sugar level, right? Now, we're going to see something here because there's a time span between each meal that is so important. So when you're eating five to six meals, maybe every two hours, you're not giving the body time to even rest to process that. You're becoming enslaved to food for life. So that is not wise counsel. Let me, let me go back here. Fatigue is results, oxygen plus glucose 
produce energy. Now remember, one of the needs of the cell is oxygen. Then food, combined together, you're going to have energy. Energy, plenty of energy. Now according to a, the warning in physician death reference, side effects of diabetic pills. And here they have special warning on increased risk of cardiovascular mortality. They tell you, even though you take the diabetic uh, metamorphin, but you're increasing your risk of dying. They tell you that. It's clear as day, but we still don't want to make no changes. Side effects cause obesity, increased damage to the blood vessel wall, increased risk of heart attacks. Growth hormone, gain weight, blood pressure, increased cholesterol, LDL, increased HDL, increased heart attack risk, irregular menstrual cycle. All of this deal with high insulin levels. So right here, you're in the right place to reverse this crippling disease. What causes non-insulin diabetes? Now, what is diabetes non-insulin? Type 1 or type 2? Non-insulin Type 2, the Bible tells me in Proverbs 26, 2, the curse causes shall not come. And Job 29, 16 says, the cause I knew not, I searched it out. So we find then that we got to search the cause. Cause to effect, cause to effect. How to disarm diabetes. God has a plan, and that's why we wrote a book God's plan for disarming diabetes. We take these eight precious laws of health and apply them specifically to diabetes. I'm not going to go through all eight laws. I'm going to go a few points, a few points as we come on down to close. Eight doctors that make house call, all right? Those wonderful doctors, they make house call. So, the first law that I always dwell on is godly trust. That's the first law in diabetes. <clears throat> we dealt with that in one of our meetings, stress, carrying the whole world, finances, work, family, children, relationship, always under stress, huh? Stress, stress. Now, you remember I stated the point, stress is valuable. Stress is essential to human growth. Stress only becomes destructive. See, was anybody listening to my, the meeting? When does stress become destructive? Anybody got a hand back there? Come on, my friend. I, li I like that hand. He put it up. Uh, stress becomes destructive when you, you reach a place where you cannot respond to it constructively. Did you hear that? It says stress becomes destructive when you reach a place where you cannot respond constructively. Is that true? Well, if you don't say it, I say yes. Now, two things we probably missed. Stress becomes destructive when its intensity and duration exceeds my ability to respond to it. Intensity is the magnitude of the stress. Duration is the length of the stress. Mike, right here unmanageable unmanageable absolutely now the only way we deal with that mind and physical health that we got to give that stress to the stress deliverer who is that stress deliverer Jesus Jesus said take my yoke upon you Christ is the one that can give us rest in stress now let me ask this real quickly so we can move on now, the word stress, S-T-R-E-S-S, -S -S, you remember that? Now, what two things we must do to those letters to find the word rest in the word stress? Two things. Somebody talk to me. Remove, that's right, and rearrange. Now, what are we going to remove? The two S, S on the beginning, S on the end. Now, what are we going to rearrange? Now, now you got T-R-E-S T-R-E-S You take the T Put it behind the S You got rest Now what does that mean in our stressful life What we got to do 
There's some things we got to remove out of our lives. Everything is not important. Hello? 30 pairs of shoes in your closet and you have not worn least 15 of those in five years. Then you go shop for another pair of shoes. Where are you going to put those shoes? Anybody listen to me? Anybody listen to me? Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, let's move on before I get spanking around here. <laughs> All right, so I think you got it. We're talking about finding rest. In a book we recommend Ministry of Healing, it states, the relation that exists between the mind and the body is very intimate. When one is affected, the other sympathizes. The condition of the mind affects the health to a far greater degree than many realize. Many of the diseases from which men and women suffer are the results of mental depression, grief, anxiety, discontent, remorse, guilt, distrust. They all tend to break down the life forces and invite decay and death. So, the mind affects the body, increased heart rate, increase the breathing, blood vessels constrict, blood fats increase, immune system weaken, digestion stop, more nutrients used up such as potassium and calcium, less waste removed. This is all dealing with unmanageable stress. Shuts down the digestive system. Digestive disturbance, you become gluten, Intolerant, wheat intolerant, ulcers also, in the stomach. Potassium and calcium is lowered out. This is the physiology of stress. Stress produces hormones and keep joints healthy. Stress causes dysfunction in the adrenal glands that sit on the back of your kidneys. Stress causes the release of cortisol, a hormone from the adrenal gland that inhibits insulin. So therefore, unmanaged stress can precipitate diabetes. Keep that in mind now. Stressed out adrenal glands produce toxic hormones, thus suppressing the immune system. Very important. Stress is, godly trust is number one. <clears throat> Emotional stress and disturbance can cause practically any disease. You see it up there on the screen, all those diseases. That would be the number one focus in your health and helping someone else, helping them by God's grace, how God wants to give them peace, not as the world give it, but as he give it, peace. Finding rest and stress, we saw that. Christ said in Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30, come unto me and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's a promise. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. So if you got a heavy burden, Jesus said, learn of me. Cast it on. Say, Lord, I give you this financial burden. I give you this break, broke down marriage burden. I give you this bitterness burden. Give it to the Lord. For it said in John 14, 27, peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives to you, I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Peace. Trust in the Lord. Psalms, carry these promises. Psalms 46, 1. The Bible says, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Our God, what a mighty God we serve. Always trust the Lord. So therefore, godly trust, give peace of mind, strengthen the immune system, reduce stress, increase circulation, encourage a good night's sleep. And then the Bible says, 
Know that God has given every man a measure of faith. Trust build as we study the Bible. You see those texts? Believe the Bible promises. That should be a T there. Act on them. Claim the promise of God. Prayer and fasting increase faith. Just some simple principle of dealing with stress. We got a few more that we go on. What about fresh air? Every cell in the body must breathe to stay alive. For oxygen, but there just isn't enough in the bloodstream to meet our daily needs. So those cells are coming together. They say, look, friend, we are starving of oxygen. There's not enough in the bloodstream. We find that God telling us that we got to eat the foods, we got to do the things that's necessary to increase oxygen. Oxygen. Oxygen plus glucose produce energy. We find. What about exercise and diabetes? Jesus said in Luke 13, 33, I must walk today, tomorrow, and the day following. Jesus exercised. Walking increases the circulation, pushes the blood through those arteries, get the cells filled with oxygen, exercise. Muscles in motion pushes, push glucose in the cells. The more you walk, and if you can't walk as much, then five, 10 steps. Then anybody familiar with this little miniature trampoline that you get on it, it called a cellulizer. Do they have those here in Jamaica? No, you're not familiar with that. Okay. Well, the best thing to do is start walking. If you're on a walker, walk. You got to walk. You got to move the blood to get the glucose in the cells. Exercise and blood glucose level. Glucose in the blood, blood, exercise, glucose, excess glucose in the blood. Only way you can get it out. We got to exercise, exercise, exercise. It improves glucose level, exercise, diabetes. What else can we do? Mm -hmm. Exercise. Let's go back. What else? We are, if we are not exercising, we are not producing enough oxygen. Muscles in motion push glucose in the cells. Exercise improves circulation which in diabetics are very poor. Normalized weight, lower blood sugar levels, help eliminate waste. A brisk one hour walk is equal to five units of insulin. You don't have to be killing yourself, just one hour a day of walking equal to five units of insulin. Isn't that wonderful? God's affordable health care program. Affordable. Work, exercise, outdoors, just out there in the garden will improve that situation. So, exercise, strengthen the heart, blood vessels, muscle, increase efficiency of lung and number of blood cells, builds the immune system, promotes sound health. Walking and outdoor labor are the best form of exercise. Strenuous exercise immediately after meal hinders digestion. So when you eat, you don't need to get into strenuous exercise. Just take a little mild digest walk. Short walk after a meal. Short walk. Increase exercise gradually. If you're not accustomed to it, add maybe, maybe a couple feet, feet till you get to a half a mile and about. Don't try to just start off like you superhuman. What about sunshine and diabetes? <clears throat> the Bible tells us in Genesis 1, 16, God made two great lights. <clears throat> and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw it, it was good, sunlight. The sun of righteousness shall rise with healing his wing. What does sunlight have to do with diabetes? Sunlight stimulates the liver in all function. S the liver is key in metabolizing nutrients. Sun, just in the sun, we'll share in a moment how you do that. 15 minutes daily on face and hands. You don't have to strip teas. You don't have to strip. 
Just sit out in the sun, 15 minutes a day. Which don't put no hand on, just your face, your eyes, and your hands. The body daily requirement is 400 units of vitamin D. 15 minutes a day in the sun. Going to stimulate that liver. So we find, let's go back. Sunlight. It says, lowers resting blood rate. Blood pressure increases oxygen content. Decreases blood cholesterol. Sunlight. Increase white blood cells. Vitamin D is produced by the sun. Application, six square inches on the face or hands for about one hour a day. Too much when on a high-fat diet may lead to skin cancer. Do not allow any trees too close to the house. They keep the sun out. Sunlight, is that cheap enough? Can you get out in the sun? Tell your folks who got diabetes. If they cannot move, get them out on the deck. Sunlight. What about rest? God's plan, proper rest. We find proper rest. Sleep is sweet. It says here, let's go back. Very important. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 5, 12. The sleep of a labor man is sweet. Physical exercise promotes restful sleep. That's why I believe that Dr. Cameron back there that man is a workaholic. I'm quite sure your sleep is sweet, Doc. You're outdoors all the time working, man. You kind of make me feel bad, but I don't feel bad. <laughs> I just admire you, man. You be pushing. Labor man's sleep is sweet. Physical exercise promotes restful sleep. That's Ecclesiastes 5.12. It is vain for you to rise up early, to set up late on the computer, on your cell past nine o'clock and rise up early to eat the bread of sorrow for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Psalms 127, two. <laughs> All right. In daylight hours, the pineal gland synthesizes a hormone called serotonin. In the absence of light, it converts serotonin into melatonin. The serotonin level falls and the melatonin level rises at night. <clears throat> the balance between serotonin and melatonin seems to affect mood and physiological function. Helps your hormone. You don't wake up grumpy, beaten up, sunlight. Man go forth unto his work into his labor until evening. Now, why do I emphasize this? Here in Jamaica, do you have occupation and the hours, they call it like working from 12 o'clock midnight to 7 o'clock in the morning. In America, they call that the graveyard shift. Do you all have that here? Okay, mm -hmm. well, I know people have to work, but God says right here, man go forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening time. What does that mean? What does that mean? Hello out there, hello friends out there. Now you say, well, Dr. Jackson, I gotta work the graveyard shift. No. I'm telling you, you got to have a trust. I know you said, Lord, my health is being compromised. I'm going to surrender this to you, and you're going to get me another job working daylight time. Hello? Now, let me ask you a question. I'm almost finished. How many of you believe there's a God? Anybody believe in God? Okay. I know you believe in God, but how many trust God? Uh oh, okay. Over there. Oh. Now, let me tell you. Since you and I believe God, trust God, who I put, a, I put a text in the beginning that God owns us by creation and redemption. He owns us. He made us by creation and redemption. Therefore, by being his property, I said this before, by being his property, when I have a problem, 
When I have, I cannot overemphasize this. When you are submitted to God, when you have a problem that is leeching life out of your body, that is not your problem, it's God's problem. And God know how to solve the problem. When you go to God, say, Lord, I'm working from 12 to 8 o'clock. I got to feed my family, Lord. I don't know what to do. And that's good news when you say you don't know what to do. Now you say, Lord, I come to you. I come to you because you told me in your word, Psalms 104, 23, throw the word at God. Man go forth into his work until evening, and therefore the beast come out at night. Deliver me. Will he not? I guarantee he will. Trust God. Lost sleep cannot be recovered. Can't sleep? Don't count sheep. Talk to the shepherd. <laughs> Did you get that? When you're out there laying down, you, 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 your mind is ruminating, do not lay there and listen to that stinking thinking. Roll out on your knees and cry out to the shepherd and give whole God to his promise. Sleep. Sleep. Hmm? Can't sleep, don't count sheep, talk to the shepherd. God said, come unto me. The best rest come to those who eat their last meal at least four hours before going to sleep. Oh, Lord, you better call on him for this. Don't just say, oh, Lord, Lord, deliver me. <laughs> four hours before sleep. Here, sleep decreased muscle tension, increased natural hormones, which are tranquilizing. The body is repaired and revitalized. Waste and waste are taken to organs of elimination. Individuals is prepared for the next day duties. Seven to eight, seven to eight hours are about the best. Hours before midnight are the best. That means good sleep should be, you should be in the bed by 9 o'clock. <laughs> so that's why we got to get you home real quickly, huh? But meetings like this, now let me share this with you, because I know we're almost done. You have two types of energy, two types of energy called vital force. You have what you call reserve energy, and you have what you call usable energy. We all have that. Now, what is usable? Now, let me give you a comparison. Say you have a checking account, checking account, and you have a savings account. Understand? Checking account, savings account. Now, what do you use your checking account for? Everyday expenses. Pay the rent, pay the mortgage. Get gas, gross. That's the checking account. What's the purpose of a savings account? For a rainy day or emergency, right? Now, let's do this. Say you had $1,000 in your savings account and you had $150 in your checking account and you have an expenditure of $250 and you don't have that in your checking account and you wrote $250 against insufficient fund, what's going to happen to that check? It's going to bounce, right? Now, if you have a banker that works with you, so what they would new, do, just say it's Jackson. Mr. Jackson, I, I see that you got, you got an overdraft here, so we're going to pull from your savings account. Follow me now. We're going to pull an extra hundred some dollars from my savings account, which I got money in my savings account. I'm going to put it into your checking account to cover the check. Are you with me? You say, wow, that's good. But you got a problem. If you keep writing usable fund against insufficient fund, you're going to exhaust your reserve. Now, when you need that reserve, you don't have nothing to draw on. You get what I'm saying? Therefore, 
when you have just certain occasions, like if I, I'm in bed normally at 9 p.m. every night. Now, given meetings like this, okay, if I am building up my reserve before I come to places like this, I have some reserve energy to compensate for my expenditure. Anybody get what I'm just saying? But if I'm always operating on my reserve, then when it comes down to emergency use, I have nothing to pull from. I hope you understand that. We got to deposit into our reserve. Does that make sense? Let's move on then. We're fine. What about water and diabetes? Water and diabetes. Lots of water. Let's find out. Drink plenty of water. The body is at least over 60, 70% water. Your brain is 85% water. Yes, your brain. A child's body is over 75% water. Aqua. Wawa. <laughs> we find here circulation, assimilation, digestion, elimination, temperature control. So on the right side, you see the brain, 75, heart, 75, lungs, 86, kidneys, 83. Water. Your body is between 70 and 80% water. Not caffeine, not Pepsi Cola, not all these drinks is water. Water. <laughs> if, listen, if you and I did not have kidneys, we would have to drink 800 glasses of water a day. And some of us don't even drink eight. If we do not have any kidneys to live, 800 glasses of water a day. If the kidneys did not receive water, 800 glasses. 800 glass. If you and I do not drink adequate amount of water, the body is so fearfully and wonderfully made, it would compensate. The first place that the body would take water from is your blood. It draws water from your blood. Now, what happens to the, the fluid of the blood? It becomes thickened. The cells are packed. It takes water from your bones. It takes water from your liver, from your skin, from your colon, from your brain, from every cell in the body just to compensate. And we keep on moving. Like Galatians 6, what we sow, we will reap. And the reaping is greater than the sowing, and the reaping is not immediately. Water. But headaches, constipation, fatigue, dry skin, signs of dehydration. Water is so important. Not only for diabetics, for all of our functioning. These are simple steps that we can share. Drink water. How much water should we drink? Well, just a little thing. Five to stay alive. Eight to feel great. Ten to rejuvenate. Okay? But in essence, let's get the formula here. Now, if you're dealing with you know, kilograms, if you weigh, say, your body weight divided by seven. That's the number of glasses of water you drink a day. So for example, if you weigh 49 kilograms, divide that by seven, that's seven glasses of water you must drink a day. That's minimum. That's not dealing with perspiration. You get what I'm saying? Inspiration. So that's minimum. So that means you're going to drink least above the minimum. Now if you translate that into American, Body weight by 16 give you the number of glasses. I mean, if, if you weighed 108 pounds, you divide that by 16, that gives you the number of glasses. Let's give them number of glasses of water daily. Water. Water. Two glasses of water. We, we have what we call a little tonic. One freshly squeezed lime or lemon in a cup of warm water, soon you wake up in the morning and drink that up until an hour before breakfast. So if you're drinking three glasses of water, get up in the morning to breakfast, then an hour or two hours after breakfast, between breakfast and lunch, you're drinking three or four more glasses of water. After lunch, two hours, you drink more water. So you don't drink all that water at one time. And, and, the, wor and the worst way, let me see, to drink water that most people like to do. Excuse me for a moment. And, and this is way, this is
That's why people like to drink water. They gulp it down, put pressure on your kidneys, flushes out electrolytes. So, we tell people, you must drink your food. Drink your food. Anybody understand what I'm saying? No? God gave you teeth. You don't... Because the stomach do not have teeth. You must chew, 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 masticate until it become liquid, taking the pressure off the stomach. Then you must chew your water. Hmm? Now it might take you a minute or two, but the body is just going to go through the bloodstream. Wonderful. Principle, water, not just for a diabetic, for each and every one of us. Water, water, water. Wait two hours after meals. It's not a good habit to drink with your meals because you dilute the food and therefore it takes, it put pressure on the stomach because now it will interfere with digested juices acting upon the food. It's always good to wait at least an hour or two hours after each meal. Chew, if you chew, 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 you won't need no water, huh? So water formula. Drink one hour before meals. Cold water slows the emptying time. It's not good to drink cold water, room temperature water, because if you drink cold water, you got to raise the temperature of your stomach level, and that is not healthy. Water intake. Let's get down, down to the last two here. Temperance. What does that mean? <clears throat> God commanded man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. God gave man a choice. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt eat thereof, you shall surely die. So the word temperance means when used in the context of health, has three very distinct meanings. Moderation, and listen carefully now, moderation in the use of that which is good. As I was talking to someone early, they said, well, we need to be moderate, so they drink alcohol. It says here, moderation in that which is good. Alcohol, we know in the Bible, is not good. You follow me? That's, you need to total abstinence from that which is harm. Eliminate it. And number three, self-control. So some of the things, moderate use of that which is good, abstinence which is harmful. So in a diabetic case, let's look at a few things here that could be detrimental. Keep pouring out tobacco, alcohol, soft drinks, chewing gum, candy bars. Those things are not healthy for the system. Of caffeine, which affects the central nervous system, robs the body of potassium and calcium, which is necessary for cell division. These are things that we need to work on. Coffee, tea, chocolate contains what we call theobromine. Bromine, caffeine, nicotine, cocaine. All those things have the same thing in common of theobromine, which affects the central nervous system. Pain reliever. Soft drinks, these are things. Alcohol, alcohol, soft drinks, all these soft drinks tends to quench your craving for sugar, but it increase uh, thirst for water. When you drink soft drink, you're not, your thirst is not quenched. It just increases that. A diabetic affects the sugar. Smoking, these are things. What can be done? We find what else can complicate diabetes? We find these are food. Refined foods, processed food, no fiber, nutrients. You can bake potato, but when you fry the food, strip the food of its nutrients, smoking, these are the things. 
Oh, man, that sure look good, doesn't it? Chocolate and stuff like that. Theobromine, these things here. Now, we make foods, nice dessert for diabetic, but chocolate with theobromine, again, it affects the central nervous system. It robs your body of B vitamins. That's what sugar does. Affects your nervous system. All sugar does that. I used to be a sugarholic. I used to eat sugar sandwiches. I would take white bread and put butter in a skillet, brown that bread, fit, pour sugar on that bread, add a little cinnamon on it, close it, and eat it. That's what contributed to my arthritis. Decrease white blood cells. Sugar. Sugar is a thief. He steals B vitamins. Contains no nutrient. Thief. Sugar weakens the immune system. If you and I then take any sugar into our body, zero sugar, our white blood cells can kill 14 bacteria every second. The more sugar we take in our body, it weakens our immune system. Weakens. I know cow milk, goat milk, what about that? Got milk? It's the protein in these foods that affects your kidneys. Cow milk. I, I can spend days. What's wrong with this picture here? You see what's wrong with the picture. Hmm? Milk is not natural. Now, over there in Thailand, this grandfather is actually giving his grandchild milk directly from the cow. Deadly. Cambodian, huh? You got to cut out the middle man. Go on. That affects definitely the organs. Let's go to the last one. Nutrients, last one. And the Lord God for a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul. From elements to man, all the elements from the dust is found in man. Magnesium, calcium, the whole host. Therefore, we should choose foods that come from a root system because we made from the dust of the ground. We made up those elements. The tree root goes down and absorbs those elements. That's the cycle of man, dust, elements. Food builds blood, blood builds cells, cells build tissues, organs, and system. So therefore, choose a diet that has roots. Have no roots, you need to boot it. No roots, elements. Dr. George Manns, in our opinion, nutrition is the most important single environment, environmental factor affecting our health. What we eat, we are. Mm -hmm. Very important. So we can reverse diabetes with a knife and a fork. Because there's a book called Knives over fork or fork over knives. So basically a diabetic need to have high fiber food. High fiber food. Otherwise there's death in the pot. According to 2 Kings 440. Danger. Your life may be in jeopardy. Are you safe at the plate? What's on your plate? You are what you eat. Eat for strength, that's the glad diet, God's life activating diet, and not for drunkenness. That's the sad diet, standard American diet, standard African diet, you name it, the sad diet. Eating food with a face is not God's design for the human race. Hmm? Chicken has a face. Fish has a face. Eating flesh food increases disease 10 times more in human beings. Fat depresses the immune system. It looks good, but it shows it's not good for you. High fat. Leviticus 723, Psalm tell us that. High fat. Too many calories, little exercise, obesity. This is all a diabetic. Fat clogs the insulin receptors. How meat causes diabetes 
high protein, fat, etc., etc. Any questions or comments as we come to the last part here? We need a low fat diet because over many graves, R I G, rest in grease. We need to eliminate and replace something bad with something better. Any question, comment? Any comment? I can go on and on. Food is your best money. We got a mic back there. I noticed, good evening everyone, I noticed that for the diabetic, most times they eventually become hypertensive. I don't know, what's the relationship? Most definitely, because in diabetes you find, number one, remember the adrenal glands are affected. The adrenal glands would also produce cortisol and insulin, and, and, and we call adrenaline that would bring constriction to the blood vessels. And not only constriction, we saw early that it would also accumulate fat in the blood vessel. You get what I'm saying? Fat clogs up the vessels. Cholesterol would enhance. So stress will do that and we find that high blood pressure, it could be a byproduct of those things. Because dealing with a person today with high blood pressure, look at the lifestyle, eating, the stress level, very normal, a person like that. So we have to reverse that. We gotta go back to all that I said here. So high blood pressure will affect the kidneys. So if that answers your question. Any other comment? I would like to know what time is the best time to take the sunlight. Oh, best time, that's a good question. I thought I'd put it on there. Best time, you needed to get it way a couple hours before 12 o'clock. <clears throat> 12 o'clock, the sun is straight up, all right? So between the hours of 9 and 10 o'clock in the sunlight. And either two or three hours after the sun is the best time to get your sun bathed. After 12. After 12. Between any time in the morning up until 11 o'clock or before 12. Hours after 12. Two or three hours after 12 is the best time to get in the sun. Did you ask that question? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, back to the, the drinking of the water. Um, we have been trying to explain over the years that the stomach, uh, when we eat anything, it is mixed with the saliva for the stomach to accept it and the other enzymes to act upon it. When we drink water, by gulping it, the saliva is not mixed with the water. So it goes into the stomach as a strange thing. Undigestible. Good. Digestion starts in the mouth. <clears throat> Digestion starts in the mouth. Carbohydrates broken down because we have starch splitting enzyme. Very true. Any other question or comment? Got one in the back there. One in the back. Over to my left. Over to my left. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Does the sun cause cancer? Sun definitely can cause cancer if the person is eating free fat, like a lot of meat products, free oil in your diet. That is what will stimulate skin cancer. If you're on a high-fat diet, if you're on a plant-based diet, in a regular diet, Get it out in the sun at the regular time, you have no problem with skin cancer. Yes, sir. What is the purpose of the trampoline? Oh, the trampoline is a, we call that a rebound, a, a trampoline. I'm not talking about that big old trampoline that you jump. It's one that sets probably about three inches off, and you get on it, and you just bounce. 
Oh. You don't have to jump, bounce. It's gravity resistant. Therefore, gravity pulls, it strengthens your muscles, increased circulation. Now, I have one, we have one in our health center that got rails on the way. A person that is can kind of hold balance, they hold on to it. And they just go up and down, up and down, every day. And that improves circulation every day. Okay. Thank my you. sister on one, she's 101 years old, just hold on and just lift up every day, every day. It improves. Any other comment? There was some food here. I want to share. Any other comment? Diet rich in fiber, whole grains, fresh fruit, vegetables, raw food. All these things are good. And here in this country, I put something out here that you have access to these things. Let's see here. Comment. Get, get a mic to my friend. What? Oh, see, uh, Ava and Dr. Cameron, they can tell you what time the consultation. Right, Doc? Ava? Any other con question? Uh, see those fruits y'all got over here? Mangoes and papaya. But you, you do not want to eat fruit by itself being a diabetic. You want to mix it with grains, grains, peas. Any other question? I was looking for, now these foods here are here in Jamaica. Leaf, we got leafy vegetables, cabbage, greens, dandelion, uh, collaloo, bok choy, broccoli, asparagus, parsley, watercress, dasheen. Can you find some of these green vegetables around in this part of the world? Most definitely here. Yeah. Fiber. All right. I'll close right there. Any other comment or question? Very good. So therefore, if you know someone with diabetes, it's worth to invest in this book. Tomorrow is Thursday. We'll be back It's Thursday, right, Doc? Same time, we're going to look at another number two leading cause of disease. Silencing the silent killer. High blood pressure. Now, can someone tell me three things that you remember from our discussion? Three things. Number one, somebody, number one, talk to me. Oh, I, get, get a mic. One is um, four hours meal before bedtime. Amen, amen, very good. Four hours before bedtime, she smiled, that must kind of prick you a little bit. <laughs> All right, give me another one. Anybody remember anything else? Anything Fa else? Fats are one of the leading cause of diabetes. Say that again, my dear. Fats are one of the leading cause of diabetes. Fats, that intake. All right, number three, very good. Plenty of water. Plenty of water. Now, why you smile and laugh when you say those things? <laughs> I don't drink that much. Okay. I don't drink much. All right, but you got to. Now, let me say this, I forgot. In this book, it tells you when to eat breakfast. You'll find out. Say so you get up in the morning, you may eat, say, at 8 o'clock. And there is a four to five hours gap to the next meal. That means when you eat breakfast, it's like a line. Your breakfast at 8 o'clock, it goes up. Five hours, it reaches about 12 or 1 o'clock. After 1 o'clock, the sugar level start dropping. That's time for lunch. Do you eat lunch? It goes up. Hmm? Then after lunch, after five hours, it dropped for your last meal. That is the normal cycle between each meal, four to five hours. And your third meal should be your light meal. You heard this before. Men folk eat like a king for breakfast, a prince for lunch, and a pauperous for supper. Women eat like a queen in the morning, princes in the afternoon, and a pauperous in the evening. 
So your evening meal should be your lightest meal, no protein meal after five or six o'clock. Why? Because the body metabolism cannot break down protein at night. Why? Your body now going into a resting mode. No energy there to break it down. Yes, ma'am. And you did talk about melatonin. Once the sun begins to go down, the melatonin level goes up. Melatonin will actually shut your pancreas down. So no insulin is being produced when the melatonin is there. So the digestion of the sugars doesn't happen. Does not so happen. It's floating in your blood. Simple principles. And I know they are challenging, but it's worth because you're going to save money and lives, and at the same time, you'll live a healthy, happy, and a holy life. May God bless. One other question before we close. Um, you mentioned that for us to know how much water we should drink, we should divide our weight by seven. In kilograms. Oh. Kg. So therefore, if it is a hundred and say ninety-four pounds, you would have divided that by two point two. Say and it again. If it is that pounds. it is in one like one ninety-four pounds, yeah. you would have divided it by two point two and then divide, divide by seven. By, you divide that by half. In American standard, if you weigh, well, okay. In Jamaica, sorry, in Jamaica we don't would you have weigh in kgs or pounds. Pounds, oh. yeah, but oh, right. pounds. Just take your weight and divide your pounds in half. Then divide it by eight. Music. If I weigh, okay, if I weigh two hundred pounds, I divide that by half. That's a hundred pounds. I divide that by eight. Eight into a hundred. Mm -hmm. That gives me almost what eleven, close to eleven, twelve glasses of water a day. I must drink. Is, is that a little clear to you? Yes, but um, well, we usually use like Put the back we usually use like 2.2. Divide oh. the pounds by 2.2, and then you would have in, get, gotten the kgs. In, in kg. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Very good. All right then. Thank you for your attention, and I pray that you have received some information that could be for transformation. So. We have any closing comments before we close down? Any closing comments? Dr. Cameron, anyone? I should have a word of prayer. Pray that we will have a safe passage home. All right, no comments? What? They work in the night. Oh, they work at night? Yeah. And they had to sleep in the day. And they sleep in the day. Yeah. Now, now what's the question? No, you were saying that based on the scripture, we should sleep in the right. work in the day and sleep at night. That's right. But some person's career right. um, leads them to work in the night, but yeah. sleep in the day. See, working, our body operates on cycle. And like I said, we're talking about hormones are being produced. The melatonin, serotonin. So when you go into bed in the daytime, it throws your whole cycle, body cycle off, all right? First of all, we need to understand that. That's why I mentioned that a person who is conscious about their health, their well-being, if they know God, they will be praying that God give them and what he will do, another shift. Because when you sleep in the daytime, your body was not designed, you know, I take to sleep at in the daytime. It's when that sun set, that's when you begin to produce hormones. Between the hours of nine and twelve, your brain go through what is called glenfatic. G L E N fatic P H Y T. It's a cleansing process. Your brain detoxifies. 
between the hour of 9 and 12. So over a long period of time, you're going to find depression and stress will come in. So I would say to the person, I know it might be challenging, but I've been in that situation, and, and I recognized my health was a priority. And I prayed that God give me another job, and he did do that. I might lost an extra $1 an hour, but my health improved over 100%. That's my suggestion. If they don't know God, I'm just telling you that they're going to have to suffer because God do not want them to suffer. Get to know God. Go to God. He will show you. All right? All right, then. Thank you very much. So it is now. Let's see what time.